Hello everyone. Today I have my baby girl Cookie here with me and together we are going to show you how to set up a proper ball python enclosure. Um, so for this video I'm going to be doing just a tank. It's going to be a 20 gallon tank so it's suitable for baby ball pythons all the way up to sub-adults and young males that are pretty small, um, but for a larger female or a larger male, then they would have to eventually move up to a 40 gallon, but you basically set them up the same way. Um, you just want to account for the space that you're setting it up in. So ball pythons are terrestrial, so they do fine in tanks and tubs and rack systems. Um, they don't climb like tree boas. Um, they can climb, they can exercise but they are prone to being a little bit clumsy, so usually you keep climbing um, sticks and frames that are in the enclosure to a minimum, and you want to be supervising them if they're actually out climbing. And ball pythons come from Africa where it is very hot, and they also like to spend a lot of time in termite mounds and other burrows and areas that are dug out where it's very humid. So they need high humidity and they need high heat. Uh, some people like to use heat mats. I don't like to use heat mats because it only heats the very bottom and not the enclosure itself unless you already are in a room where it's very warm. Um, but a lot of people's houses are like 72 and that usually won't work. So I like to stick to ceramic heat emitters. Now I'm not going to be completely setting up the enclosure. Um, there's a couple little end things that you would normally do to it to make it perfect for the ball python. but. Um, I don't keep my ball pythons in tanks, I keep mine in a large rack system, so I haven't had a reason to actually put a ball python in a tank in a while, so um, I'm not going to be actually fully setting it up. But I'm going to talk all about it and show you what you need and how to put it together. Now like I just said, you can keep ball pythons in racks and tubs and PVC cages and tanks. It's just a little bit different on how you do it if you're using a different type of enclosure. So for my rack system, it's kind of the same as keeping them in tubs except it's they're stacked on top of each other. I still do put decor in there, I put water bowl, I put hides, so they have everything that they would have in a tank. It's just in a different setup. You can't see them, it doesn't look as pretty. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I'm sorry if the lighting isn't the best. I am, a bunch of my lights blew out, but, and obviously I'm doing this on my bed as well, so it's gonna be like wobbly. Um, so I have every, almost everything that you would need for a ball python enclosure here. Now I do not have um, black construction paper or black foam that you would wanna put along the outer three um, tank sides, not the front one obviously because you want to be able to see in there, but it makes them feel more secure. So um, you can do that at any point during putting this together. You can do that um, right before you start putting things in or you can put that there at the end, but you just tape it. You just tape black paper or black foam to help insulate the tank as well um, on those three back sides. And I also do not have foil tape. Now foil tape is something you'll do at the very end. Um, and you'll put it on the lid. So you'll cover the lid with foil tape, except for where your heat source or sources are, depending on how um, cold the area your ball python is in. You'll want to have multiple heat sources or just one strong one, or maybe your room's really hot and you don't even need a strong one. You have like a very minimum heat sources. Um, but you'll cover everything and put the heat source where there is no foil tape and that'll help keep humidity and heat in because in a tank it is almost impossible to maintain heat and humidity without that foil tape because it just goes right out the top. But with a little bit of elbow grease you can get a tank to work pretty well. And tanks are something that are easy to come by. Um, bin cages are also very easy to get but sometimes heating a bin cage can be a bit of a pain. You might have to cut out the top and add a heat source above as well as a heat mat underneath. So I feel like tanks are probably, if you only have one to three snakes or ball pythons, then they're definitely the easiest. All right, so I'm gonna go over all the supplies that I have here. So I have two hides. You want a hide for the cool and the hot side. I have a water bowl big enough for my snake to soak in. Now remember, this isn't for a full grown ball python. This is for a sub-adult or more like a, a young, very young ball python, the one that you saw before, Cookie. And then I also have decor. 
I don't have the prettiest decor right now because that's in my other tanks, so I don't want to destroy all my other tanks to put decor in here, but I have enough decor to keep everything covered because ball pythons are shy animals and they want to feel safe and secure. And then this is overkill. You don't need a thermostat that looks like this. This is, you don't need one like this, but this is the one that I had on hand um, that's not being used right now. I'm also not going to be taking it out of the box. I just wanted to hit here to show that you can use a thermostat. Now, if you don't want to use a thermostat or you don't have the money at the moment to have a thermostat and you're not using an under tank heater, if you're using an under tank heater for any reason, you must have a thermostat. But if you are doing overhead heat, that is either from a ceramic heat emitter or a basking light, which then if you had a basking light, you would also either need an under tank heater or a ceramic heat emitter because you don't want to have any light at night, but your snake still needs to be warm. Um, so I'm going to be using ceramic heat emitter. This is a very tiny ceramic heat emitter and isn't the one that you would use. This is from my frogs. You would want to use about like a 75 watt ceramic heat emitter. But like I said before, it depends on how hot or cold the area your ball python is going to be in is. Now I also have substrate. So we have our tank, our lid, you'd also want to get um, lid locks. We have a, oh, this is what I was talking about before. Um, so if you don't have a thermostat because you're doing overhead heat, you want to at least, at least you must have a dimmer. So this you can get at Home Depot, you can get it on Amazon. It's just a lamp dimmer, um, but it dims the heat. So it'll make it so you're always able to know and have control over your heat source. You always know what it's at and to know even better what it's at. This is also extremely important and you must have it if you have really any animal that is in an enclosure is a thermometer. It's a thermometer and a hygrometer. So you want to make sure you know the humidity and you want to make sure you know the temperature as well. So you can put one on each side. So what most people do is they get ones with probes so you don't have to stick an entire this part in. You just put this probe over in this corner here and it slides down like that and then you close it. And then there it is hanging right in there. So you'll have one for the hot end and one for the cool end so you always know what temperature it's at and the humidity as well. All right, let's start putting it together. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your tank is completely clean. So, this is not completely clean. Um, there was chicken dust and things in it, because this is an old tank that I had lying around. But I'm not actually going to be putting a snake in here to live in here, so I'm not going to worry about giving it a good scrub. But you want to use, if you get it from somewhere else and you didn't buy it fresh from the store, I would suggest using bleach and then making sure you really rinse it out and let it dry for a while. Um, before adding any substrate or any animals in there because the bleach can be just as dangerous as what you're bleaching away. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So I have my substrate down here. I'm probably going to make a mess on my bed. Oh god. You can definitely use more substrate than this, but um, this is just what I had. So I did about an inch, inch and a half of substrate, but I usually suggest doing at least like two inches. Um, and because ball pythons need humidity, you're gonna wanna use something that holds humidity well and doesn't mold. Now, there's a lot of options. You can use forest floor, you can use cocoa blocks, you can use cocoa husk. Uh, there's a lot of different, a lot of cocos. I would not suggest using cocoa fiber or aspen. Unless you lived in an area where it is already extremely humid and you don't have any mold problems with aspen if you're using it in other tanks already, I wouldn't suggest anything that is super, super tiny fibers that can get stuck in their heat pits or aspen because aspen doesn't hold humidity well and it also molds very easily. Um, so I'll show you guys what I'm using looks like and it's already damp. It focuses. So this is what I'm using. There's so many different brands that make this. Rep to chip. Um, that I, think, I think this is Rep to chip. I'm not sure. It might be a mix of multiple different brands. Um, I just, you know, whatever's on sale. It, it all works the same. I really, people vouch for certain companies, but um, as long as it holds the humidity well and is clean, then that's really all you got to worry about. 
All right, so now that we have that in there, we can add our hides. Now, depending on the size of your snake, that will determine what kind of hide you wanna get. Now, you don't wanna get a hide that has two openings. So that'll make it for the, so, excuse me, that'll make it so the snake is scared. They can face this way, but then a predator can get them from behind. If they face this way, then a predator can get them from this side. So you wanna make sure the hide has one exit and one exit only. So one single opening. And you want it to be usually a pretty small opening so that way when they go inside, they can go into the corner and hide and they feel nice and secure and there's no light hitting them, especially if you're gonna be using any type of basking light or anything that gives off any type of light. So one on the cool end and one on the hot end. Um, these are the most basic hides that you could possibly buy. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere. A lot of different companies make them, but they're super easy to clean. That's what's really awesome about them is they're so easy to clean. They don't have any porous holes or anything. And then we also have water bottle. I also prefer using either ceramic or plastic that doesn't have any porous holes. I don't like using any type of like rock material because they always end up getting some type of scum buildup or stains. Um, they can be kind of rough and I don't want any of my snakes cutting themselves on them. But sometimes you can find ones that are soft and not too porous that you can use. But um, how it looks is completely up to you. It does not have to look this boring because um, I just grabbed what I had available. So you can get fancy hides. You can make hides if you want. Um, you can use. You can even use a dog dish. A lot of people actually in my racks, I have like little cat dishes that are ceramic that I use for water. Now we want to make sure that we have lots of coverage. I like to use ones that have the little suction cups on them, and you don't have to buy these at reptile stores. So you can actually go. Okay, this mm, this one might not have been. Oh no. So you can actually go to like, oh, AC Moore's not open anymore, like Michael's or um, the dollar store even, and you can get plants that look like this. Now you want to go for things that don't have a bunch of wires in them, um, no metal sticking out, uh, nothing that breaks off easily, something that is nice and sturdy, and usually you want to go for plastic. Um, you can also use the fabric kind, uh, you just got to wash it for any type of mold, and if they poop on it, it's a little harder to clean. So you want to make sure you cover everything real good. Now, like I said before, you don't have to decorate it this way. You can get flowers, you can get pink hides, you can get purple hides, you can get Halloween-themed things, and you can add other decor in here as long as it's not sharp, there's no paint coming off of it, it's waterproof. Um, you can add like little decorations kind of spruce it up. Now remember, besides this decor that is going along the back here, you're also going to want to have that black paper on the these two sides here and then the back as well. All right, then you would just fill that water bowl up. Make sure your substrate is moist, not too moist that when you wring it out water comes out, but just moist enough that it creates a lot of humidity. And have, oh it's in a knot. Your thermometer. There you go. And then you can kind of just stick your thermometer right on the top there so you can see it nice and good. And then you would cover the top with um, the foil tape. You can also use tin foil and then just tape it with duct tape along the sides. It's very, very important that you're doing this on the outside and making sure there's nothing sticky on the inside because if a snake gets stuck to something on the inside, it's very dangerous and they can actually have their scales get ripped off and cause um, to wrap around them. So you want to make sure you're not doing that. And then this, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. It really depends on your climate. You can, if you have very low humidity, you might want to put the heat source over the heat bowl, or the heat bowl, oh my gosh, over the water bowl. And what that'll do is make it so water evaporates faster and that'll create lots of humidity. Um, but 
if you live somewhere where it's already very humid, you'll want this far away from the water bowl. Now, with that, you will have to fill the water bowl a lot more than you normally would, but it's worth it to keep the humidity up for your snake because uh, low humidity can cause respiratory infections and lots of other problems, and high humidity can cause problems like scale rot and mouth rot as well. So I would be putting this on this side because I don't want to put it near these plants because I don't want to burn them. So if anything is high up, you don't want to put your heat source right above it. So I'm putting it on this end. Now, I'm not actually going to be plugging this into the wall, but you would just plug it right into um, and you'll just have to play with the settings a little bit before you're able to put your animal in there. You want to make sure that everything reads correctly on here. Oh, this is like broken. Let me fix this real quick. There we go. And make sure that the temperature is correct on here. So I usually like to keep it around 60-65% humidity. And then for the hot end, you want it around 90 and then for the cool end, you want it anywhere from about 78 to 80. Uh, it can fluctuate a little bit within there, especially depending on the climate you live in. But that's like a general rule of thumb: is you want a hot spot of eight or hot spot of 90, and a cool spot of high 70s or low 80s. Um, some people also like to just keep the whole tank at 86 because 86 is just the ideal temperature. They don't have to thermoregulate as much if the t whole tank is kept at one consistent temperature. A lot of people have had success with that. I've used that actually when I had my baby hatchling ball pythons in tanks. I had them resting at 86 degrees the entire time for about, about a year almost. So that worked really well for me. All right, so say that you had this tank all done, there was water in the water bowl, the humidity was around 60, the hot spot was around 90, and it was all good. You had your clips to make sure that the top stays closed. Then you could introduce your ball python, and here's what she looks like in scale to this tank. So she has enough room to stretch her entire body out if she wants to. She's going under the water bowl. Let me turn that for her so she's not as in the way. And once your snake goes in there, if you see them moving certain things around, you can adjust things as you need. There she is. Oh, here comes a kitty. Hi, Mudsy. She's checking everything out. When you first <laughs> when you first put a snake in a new enclosure, they will do lots of tongue flicking, lots of exploring, get to know their territory. All right, so that was it for this video. I um, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found the information useful. If you have any questions, please uh, put a comment in the comment section, and I will answer them the best I can. I'll be doing more videos like this for corn snakes, I'll be doing them for tegus, I'll also be doing it for king snakes, so stay tuned if any of those animals interest you, or if you just want to watch one of my videos. So thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!